Welcome to The Wall of Soundtrack, a show where we discuss the music and soundtracks behind the very best TV shows and motion pictures. In this episode, we'll be analyzing and dissecting the music and soundtrack behind Tim Miller's Marvel comic action comedy film, Deadpool. Hey guys, just a quick update. I've released a new episode of the Wall of Soundtrack podcast where Cy and I and our new guest, Joey Bonskowski, analyze and dissect the music and soundtrack behind Ted Demi's crime drama film, Blow. So if you're a fan of the film, be sure to check this episode out. Also, I will be releasing a new episode of the Brewtune podcast where I pair Maryland Hard Rockers Clutch with their signature beer, the New Belgium Clutch Lips of Faith. So if you're a fan of Clutch and New Belgium beers, be sure to check this episode out. Deadpool is a Marvel comic book and action comedy film that was released in 2016. The film was directed by Tim Miller, and the script was written by both Rhett Reese and Paul Wernick. The story surrounds a mercenary named Wade Wilson, who receives the unfortunate diagnosis of terminal cancer. Wade receives a treatment that not only cures his cancer, but leaves his body permanently scarred. Wade seeks revenge as Deadpool, a hitman with a motor mouth that uses comedy and pop culture references to both distract and defeat his opponents. Deadpool was both a critical and commercial success as Ryan Reynolds reprised the title character and role that he had in the 2009 film X-Men Origins Wolverine. The film also had a cast of well-known actors and actresses including the following. Ryan Reynolds as Deadpool, Marina Baccarin as Vanessa, Ed Screen as Ajax, T.J. Miller as Weasel, Brianna Hildebrand as Negasonic Teenage Warhead, Gina Serrano as Angel Dust, and Stefan Kapikic as Colossus. My returning guest for this discussion is Cy Shackleford. Cy is a writer for the entertainment commentary and review website, Action A Go Go. You can follow his articles on the website, www.actionagogo.com. You can also follow him on Twitter. His Twitter handle is at Shack underscore house 83. Cy and I had a blast on this episode, had a lot of laughs, and we hope you enjoy it as well. Here's my discussion with Cy on the music and soundtrack behind Tim Miller's comic book, comedy action film, Deadpool. Sai, thanks for joining me. Uh, thank you, thank you. Glad to do this as always. Yeah, the last episode we had was was fun. We brought Joey on. Yeah, Joey added a lot to to the movie Blow and the soundtrack that we were looking at. Yeah, it was good to have a third person dissect that. Yeah, looking forward to to getting him on the, maybe another episode. Oh yeah, so I think he'll be I think he'll be down for our next choice, no doubt. Yeah. So uh, what's uh, new with Action Go Go? Well, we're still trying to bang away at that whole spy, our whole spy theme now. And now we're actually taking, we're trying to enlist more people to contribute a little more things to it as well. Um, it'll be out this year. I know that much. Nice. Yeah, it's just still a work in progress pretty much, but it's coming along now. Have you seen any new movies lately? Or New movies in the theater? No. The last thing I saw was Endgame, Avengers Endgame. I've seen that three times now. Wow. <laughs> yes, I'm trying to push that thing past Avatar. I do not want James Cameron to have that spot no more. Yeah, and I I heard they're releasing a new Terminator movie, right? Yeah, it's gonna be it's it'll be, it'll be the sixth Terminator movie, uh, Terminator Dark Fate. They released a trailer for it just last week. Cameron, he's actually producing it. He has a bigger hand in this one than just than than how he did with Terminator Genesis a few years ago, where he merely just endorsed it. Right. And this one, it has Linda Hamilton's back. She's reprising her role as uh, Sarah Connor. Awesome. Yeah, and the thing the thing is. And Arnold's going to be in it too, and he looks older now, which is understandable considering he is over 70 now in real life. But with any Terminator film since the third one, my only real question has been, who's going to play John Connor this time? Yeah, I mean, they keep shifting actors. Furlong's, Eddie Furlong, he's still the best John Connor, and he was only Connor when the character was 10 years old. Yeah, and it's gone through so many different shifts of like who plays that character. I feel like the franchise is kind of losing its grip on yeah, their he, fan base. And he's a central character, really. I mean, the films have always been about protecting John Connor, making sure he lives. And it's been who has been Eddie Furlong in T2, Nick Stahl in the Terminator 3, Christian Bale in T4, Terminator Salvation, the fifth one, Terminator Genesis. Uh, 
some Australian actor. I forget his name. Jai Courtney was. I thought he was uh, Kyle Reese, though, wasn't he? Or Jack did he Courtney? play? Yeah. Well, Reese was in the, in Genesis. Yeah, but I don't remember who played him. Okay. Yeah, I only remember Amelia Clark. She played Sarah Connor in that one. Yeah, I get him. I'm just I'm lost with it. There's just been so many movies. Which I just realized this. What's it called? Uh, uh Lena Lena Hetty, who plays Cersei Lannister on Game of Thrones. She played Sarah Connor in the Fox TV show, The Sarah Connor Chronicles. And then a few years later, Amelia Clark, her co-star in Game of Thrones, plays the same character in Genesis. Oh, that, okay. I think that may have been deliberate casting, maybe. Well, and to talk a little bit about Dead, Deadpool, I think Tim Miller, right? He's going to be direct. Is he directing the sixth, the, the new movie, I believe? The third, uh, the third rated R installment of Deadpool? Because there have been like... No, I was talking about... Terminator 6. Oh, yeah, yeah. He is going to be directing Terminator Dark Fate. Yes, he is. Yeah. So I guess that'll be interesting. It'll be a little, it'll be another, well, it'll be his second, and that'll be his second feature film. Yeah, his second directorial, his second feature film that he's directed. Yeah, because Deadpool, that was actually his debut. Nice, nice. And he did, and he knocked it out of the park with that one. Yeah. And, uh, oh, I just forgot to mention today is Memorial Day. So shout out to all of our veterans. Yes. Shout out to all of our vets. And all the American men and women who have fought and or died in war. Yeah. I, and just speaking about veterans, we were just talking about Oliver Stone. Uh, I oh. watched uh, the, the, the Putin interviews on Showtime. It's like a four-part uh, four part documentary series. Dude, it was so good. I believe it. I haven't seen it myself. But Stone, he's very smart politically. And he has experience in that kind of arena to all, at least in the war portion of it. And understands the politicians who direct that portion of it as well, too. So he has a lot to say, especially with the films that he's done. I was very surprised how relaxed Putin was around him. Like, he just made Putin kind of open up, which was, I thought, very strange. Because you, know, you always see him, he always seems like very kind of even, even stoic with, and reserved even, and cold. Even, <laughs> even with the kind of questions that Stone was asking him? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, he just, he was, and I mean, you know, I, I know he has his reputation and is, is, you know, known as a butcher, but, um, he like spoke very eloquently to say the least. Like he just, I was very surprised like how well spoken he was. And like, he, he seemed like he was a very sharp guy. What did you, did you see him when he was around Trump at one point at all during the Helsinki, like the conference or whatever to sit down? Yeah. I saw like p bits and pieces of it on, on the news, but, um, yeah, it was, it was very, very, surprising and shocking like just watching them interact and how open he felt around oliver stone that is surprising yeah and i'm just wondering how they got the access to i mean <laughs> you know but I, I guess he did do the movie snowden and there was some research that he was doing in moscow and yeah have you seen that movie yet uh, where uh, Joseph Gordon-Levitt played the character, I only saw a part of it, not the whole thing. He does the uh, the accent, like his like Snowden's voice, really well. Oh yeah, like I think he nailed it. Is Snowden is he still in Russia now? I think so. Damn, he he ain't gonna be back here for a while. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but um, you know, it'll be it'll be interesting to see that. But um, so let's jump into our 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 movie here, Deadpool. Yes, Deadpool. I been a fan of Deadpool since I was a kid I remember I even bought the I got the first issue where he debuted back when I was in elementary school I did not think the character would blow up to be as big as he's become yeah and, and you know I thought that was something that was interesting is the um, I know there was some sort of like um, stick going on between um, what's his name Hugh Jackman and and um, Ryan, Reynolds. Ryan Reynolds about you know the uh, Wolverine what's it um the X-Men Origins Wolverine yeah. film that came out in 2009. They were both in it. Yeah. Yeah. And he like, he actually wore that at the end of the movie, a picture of, yeah. of him on his face. It's like it's like Fox just gave the creators of Deadpool permission, like, just do whatever the hell you want. Like, throw spaghetti against the wall and see what sticks. Yeah. And it, and it worked. <laughs> it worked. Yeah. Because they skewered the studio, too, and made fun of the fact that made fun of their relationship with Marvel regarding the X-Men characters. Yeah. <laughs> Through a lot of barbs like that in there. It's like, wow, they got away with this. Wow. And, and like we were saying earlier about the film, when I saw the trailer for it, that let us know that it was going to be rated R. And then I saw it when it opened on Friday in February 2016, Valentine's Day. I remember seeing it in the theater and people bringing little kids in. I'm like, did you people not see the trailer? Yeah. But the, the, the trailer doesn't even doesn't even do the movie justice in terms of how explicit it is. 
I just love the comedy too. Like uh, yeah. TJ, what was his name? TJ Miller, Miller, the comedian. Yeah, him Weasel. being in there. Yeah. He was, uh, I always remember him from Silicon Valley and it's like TJ Miller is essentially playing TJ Miller in this movie. <laughs> it's basically, yeah. It's hysterical. The scene where he's with, uh, with, he's with Wade after he gets his healing power and he, his body is all scarred up. He's like, Vanessa's not the superficial type. How bad? Oh my God. You like what you see? No. It's like two avocados hate fucking each other. <laughs> not 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 out of love, but because that was the only way they could find catharsis in their relationship. <laughs> Just keeps going on and on. Like you look like Freddy Krueger, f- f- face fucked on topographical map 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 of Utah. Yeah, it, it did look like Freddy Krueger. It made me think of that guy, you know, the Merkins that does like the, 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 the uh, what's it, a uh, flick of the wrist? Oh, like, yeah, oh, yeah, the, 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 the thing, yeah, the, the parody, yeah. Yeah, we got to get him on the podcast, man. <laughs> I want to meet that guy because he looks just like Freddy. <laughs> and he does the voice so well. Too, yes, he like, does. Oh, man. I mean, he could actually rap some better than some of the rappers that are out now, like, you know, on the man, music market. Some of them, yeah. I mean, he could definitely rap better than Migos. Yeah, they got to they gotta put a, uh, they got to put an album out. <laughs> I'd like to hear that. I would a, buy it. <laughs> I like to. I like to hear that. There hasn't been a comedy rap album since uh, Jay Zone, producer slash MC from New York. Yeah, yeah. So let's jump into our first song here. Um, it's by Juice Newton, "Angel of the Morning." It's played in the opening credits, and this is this is a song that we actually spoke about in a, a few episodes ago in the um what's it true detective yes in true detective it was used in episode seven season one in the opening scene yeah it's got that real like distinct you know opening it kind of sounds like it, uh like you're in heaven almost or like surreal. a dream you very know? surreal like like intro to it yeah and i think it's just like it's like the juxtaposition you know like you see the opening credits and you think of someone like you think of it it's going to be some guy that's like you know pleasant and and it's like this it's complete opposite complete, of like, complete opposite like people getting like violently killed and yeah. one guy with like a car cigarette lighter hanging out of his mouth yeah and another guy being thrown out of a window and it's like what is going on here and this song in the background being juxtaposed with it it's like <laughs> there's a certain black humor to it yeah and it's like I've never really seen an intro done that done like that before where it has like directed by douchebag, you know, like maybe that just lets you know they're not really taking anything seriously, like directed by douchebag and they showed Ryan Reynolds didn't even put him by name. They just said God's lucky idiot. <laughs> I really like how they put this like kind of comedic spin on a, a, a Marvel like comic book. That's the thing with Deadpool. When he first appeared in a, in a New Mutants issue, right before they became an X-Men spinoff team, X-Force, when he first appeared in his first appearance, he was trying to fight the team, the New Mutants team, but he, even he was beaten in comedic fashion. They beat him, put him in a box, and FedExed him back to his own, his, his employer. And he's always had that motor mouth that he always has, using it to distract opponents, but he can fight. He's skilled in, like, swords, weapons, and whatnot, but that's, but his whole pop culture witticisms that he keeps he keeps mentioning throughout his career that's been like a hallmark of him but then in the late 90s and in the last decade they started oversaturating the character giving him like giving him like series after series and incorporating him in other people's books yeah. having him break the fourth wall and i thought that made him a parody of what he used to be but and that whole breaking the fourth wall thing i think it works better in the movie than it does in the book do you feel like he's less serious? Like he is less serious, yeah, very less serious. He's almost slapstick, and Mar- he's like Marvel's go-to character for whatever. He's almost a bigger flat. He's almost a bigger company flagship character than Spider-Man. Gotcha. I just liked. I thought Ryan Reynolds was the perfect, perfect fit for this like character. Oh, he was because did you see X-Men Origins Wolverine? No, I haven't seen it yet. Okay, he was in that as Wade Wilson. He wasn't Deadpool yet. And he had scenes with Hugh Jackman's Wolverine, Lee Shriver's uh, Sabretooth. And even then, uh, Reynolds was a motor mouth in that one as well, too. <laughs> but they, when we wanted to see how they were transformed into Deadpool, they did. They just did a horrible job at the end. And it was parodied in this film, too. When he picks up an action figure with blades on him, yeah. that was how, what he was transformed into at the end of X-Men Origins, Wolverine. Okay. Yeah, so that's why they reference that in Deadpool. <laughs> And then we have two other characters, right, that come into the film. It's uh, Colossus and then... Uh, Negasonic Teenage Warhead. And they're part of the 
X-Men, yeah. right? Like, yes, they are part of the X-Men, especially Colossus. He's more known for being with the X-Men. And even they were kind of even they were kind of parodied in this movie as well, too. And then in the second movie, Deadpool, Deadpool 2, is that where like Thanos comes into the movie or not Thanos, the not guy Thanos. the guy who plays Thanos, Josh Brolin, he comes into the movie as Cable, who was one of the big X Men characters who came on the Cable was part of that whole nineties big guns. Gotcha. Big guns kind of motif really. Okay. And he never really died out with it. It just made him more popular. And even in the last decade he had a book, Cable and Deadpool, where they both team up together. Okay. Yeah, after Deadpool became less serious and less of an enemy for them. They had this they had this um video on YouTube. It's like B it was done by the BBC and they both like Josh Brolin and uh Ryan Reynolds, like they both team off trying to make each other laugh. It's like <laughs> a contest. Uh huh. It's so funny, like Josh Brolin the whole time. I think Josh Brolin won, like, because he's just he plays a good asshole, you know? <laughs> he does. I was watching him in Sic- I was watching him in Sicario, Day of Soldado earlier today. Yeah. The scene where he's like <laughs> like this is Africa. There ain't no rules here. Yeah. It's like don't trust a guy who wears crocs, right? <laughs> 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 you just see that shot where he's walking up to like the trailer yeah. and he's like he's got those green crocs on. It's like, oh boy. And that great big beard, yeah, yeah. It's like they, yeah, they let this guy do whatever the hell he wants to, so he dresses however he wants to. Yeah, and he was cracking on Ryan Reynolds. He was like he's like uh you've done green lan he's like you've done green lantern. He's like, but you're still here. <laughs> <laughs> but I think he said actually like green lantern. Green Lantern. Yeah. That movie was that movie was some shit. They're yeah. right. And, and Ryan Reynolds was like, the editor didn't even see the movie. <laughs> <laughs> Reynolds knows how to troll somebody right back. He's good at that in real life. Yeah, he's like, he's like, oh, uh, you think you're so great? Says the guy from the Goonies. <laughs> that's, the, that's, that's the one thing he was known for for a very long time until the 2000s. Yeah, and then, then, then he was like, I actually like the Goonies, Ryan Reynolds. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, it's like one of my favorite movies. <laughs> But yeah, we'll go to our next song here by um, Salt and Peppa, and this is actually one of my one of my favorite rap songs growing up, like R and B. Salt and Pepper was definitely like something I listened to when I was growing up during the MTV days. Yeah, I remember when this album came out and this video came out back when I was in fifth grade. Yeah, it was, it was a big album, very necessary. They had like three number one, three or four number one hits on there, and that's what. I knew who Salt and Pepper were, were from the song Push It that they had back in '88. Yeah, but this this album and the videos that had accompanying them gave them like sex appeal, and I was like, I was like, wow, yeah, wow, y'all can rap and y'all are fun. And they were they were also on In Living Color, right? They made like a few appearances on Living Color, like probably as like the musical act of acts they would have like in the first three seasons. Yeah, I just remember like that during that time, Salt and Pepper was very popular, and then like bands like Black Street, you know. Mm-hmm. And, like the MTV days. I just remember those, you know. Back when MTV still played music and music yeah. videos. Not reality, bad reality TV shows oh, like oh, that. Oh, they started doing that once when I, when I was in college. I remember by the time I was a senior in college, the MTV VMAs that they came out with in my senior year, they didn't even have a host for that shit. Yeah. I mean, it's just, I I don't even know how, how it's still uh, surviving. I guess they found a, another market. but I, I guess, but the market that grew up on it when, during its inception, it's like none of us watch it no more. Yeah, and that, that and like I, you know, they used to have Beavis and Butthead, and I loved the Beavis and Butthead. That was I did too. I did too. I didn't. I didn't understand the satire in it when I was ten years old when I was watching it, but I, but it's still, it was just cool to see a cartoon like that on MTV. Yeah, Mike Judge, a genius. But <laughs> yeah, this uh, Salt and Pepper, um, the scene where shoot, it's happening. Yeah, the song Shoot. Yep, it's being played when Deadpool's sitting what on the edge of the bridge, and he's yeah. got his radio there. It looks like an elementary school kid's radio, yeah, because he has like it taped on there with his name written in crayon, Wade. Yeah. And he's drawing a picture with a crayon. It's like this dude is seriously unhinged. I think it's some I think it's actually kind of a nod to the nineties, right? Like it's maybe the director's maybe the director was like, Hey, like I'm gonna put like this old school radio that you would see back then, you know? Uh, perhaps, yeah. I mean, maybe it was a little inside joke or something. I don't know. Probably, yeah. I mean, apart from showing just how crazy Wade Wilson is, it was probably like a nod back to the '90s, yeah, and with the song as as well too. And and what do you think about the lyrics? I mean, like, the, oh, so those are kind of a playoff. We were talking about this a little bit of the upcoming scene, right? There's a big shootout, like Uzi, like you know, uh, mm-hmm. the guy on the motorcycle. Yeah. What's it? Um, hits his name. Ja- uh, who's the guy? Um, the main villain. What's his oh, name? Francis. 
Francis. Like Ajax. Yeah. Ajax. Yeah. He shows up on the, uh, the motorcycle with the Uzi. Mm-hmm. And then if you look at the lyrics here, it says, uh, can I get some fries with that shake booby? Shake, shake booby. Boobie. If looks could kill you, you would be an Uzi. So a little shot reference. That thing. What's yeah. up with that thing? I want to know. How, How does, does it, it hang? hang? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Straight up. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it was, um, I, I like it. It's a, it's a really good, I think it's a really good song to include in there. Definitely, uh, a very very popular song when you hear it you just know it yeah exactly they put they include a lot of songs like that in here current and old so then um go to our next song and i believe that one is the uh calendar girl yes yes by neil sadaka i hope i pronounced sadaka and this is used in the uh the sex scene or sex montage between Wade and Vanessa. Yeah, Miranda Bakker and she. This movie made me like her a lot. I didn't like her in uh, Homeland all that much. Okay. On Showtime, but this one was like, I'm looking at her as like you're a teenage boy's fantasy. Did you, you ever include her in that like on the action to go go like Woman, Woman Crush Wednesday? Woman Crush Wednesday, yeah. No, I haven't. I should though. Yeah, that would be a good, a I, good one. Yeah. I should though, definitely. If I can find a lot of non Deadpool pictures of her though, still. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Yeah, this one, yeah, Calendar Girl. I remember I first heard this song when it was used in a Jason Priestley movie of the same name back in 93, where the plot was a bunch of guys who were trying to go to L.A. to meet Marilyn Monroe. Okay. And then in here, it's used in a sex montage between Ryan Reynolds' character and Morena Bachran's character, Vanessa. She's a prostitute with a heart of gold, pretty much. Yeah. And then they show them smashing on several holidays out of the year, even things that aren't even where you don't even have a day off for, like International Women's Day or <laughs> Chinese New Year. And Thanksgiving, it's like they just they're fucking on top of food and feeding each other mashed potatoes and whatnot. Yeah, and then like during the Halloween one, he like Ryan Reynolds has like a vampire vampire teeth or something. Vampire like, teeth, he's going down on her with those teeth. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> like, well. I kind of like lost it for a little bit. I was like, what are they, where are they going with this? Like, I was like, you know, uh, mm-hmm. you know, but I guess it's just, you know, some random humor, right? Random humor is right. Yeah. But, so. it, but it works. Then our next song, what's it? Um, G- by uh, Joe Marson. Joe Marson. Poor St. John. Yeah. Wade, it, Wade's in a deep funk, in a state of depression. Even after his year with Vanessa where he's in love and everything's all good. He finds out he has terminal cancer. Yeah. So he's, he's been going through all these different doctors, brochures that his girlfriend's been giving him, but he's in a depressed state right now. I mean, he still has a sense of humor, no doubt, but, but he looks very worse for wear. He's sweating. He has like a depressed, he's a frowner. Yeah. And, um, you know, the lyrics, I think, match up, match up with those themes as well. It says, well, he was a man. Oh, he was a good man. He was out of his mind, mind. but deep down inside, oh, he was a good man. And despite his proclamations in the film, like, I ain't no hero or anything, everything like that. And he's right. He's not a hero. Yeah. Yeah. He, he just, he's just a bad guy who keeps the other bad men away from the door, just like they say in True Detective, season one. Would you consider him kind of like an anti hero? He, yes. He is. Okay. A, he, he's become an anti hero. You know, since his first limited series that he had back in 93, his first four issue limited series, I think that's where they really were the guy who, one of the guys who created him. Uh, the writer, the the artist who created him, Rob Liefeld, who's in the film in the strip club scene, and his name is mentioned on one of those uh, highway highway direction billboards or whatever. Him and the writer Fabian Nicieza. Nicieza wrote the limited series in the '90s, and he established him as more of a anti-hero character. Gotcha. Because he ends up saving Vanessa in that book. But in the book, Vanessa's a mutant as well. Her, she's a shapeshifter, but he ends up saving her because she was his old girlfriend before he became Deadpool. What does that mean, shapeshifter? I mean, a person who can just change their shape and form, their bodily shape and form. Usually, it's to match another person around them, where they can match their their skin color, hair, eyes, body shape, even down to their fingernails. I mean, I mean not, not not fingernails, but fingerprints. I mean, right? Yeah, and like, and usually in the movies, you just see people just tra- changing shape into just other people. But in the books, as well as other films that we've seen, like T two. Other shapeshifters, shapeshifters can do a whole lot more. Like the T-1000, he's a polymorphic shapeshifter. Gotcha. That's, you know, on a random note, um, back to True Detective again, I, I had bought an album by Lara Ling. I remember we talked about her on the, uh, the True Detective episode. She's actually got an album called Shapeshifter. Really? Yeah. 
So it just like it made me think of that when you said Shapeshifter. I was like, oh, Lara Lynn. Uh, <laughs> nice. Lara Lynn album, but yeah. Nice, nice connection. The uh, the next song we do uh, is or that we're covering is the Cordettes, Mr. Sandman. I remember this song mostly from the first two Back to the Future films. Yeah. Yeah, the scene where Biff he's really trying to he's really trying to hit on um the lady who later became Lorraine McFly. Okay. And she tries to pull under her dress and look under that. Oh jeez. Yeah, right out in public and I'm like, dude, how I'm like how do how do how did barbarians like you ever ever get women? <laughs> he's just like the bully, right? Like the He's a bully, yeah. The, the main antagonist of all three throughout the whole trilogy. This song was like mad surreal and almost like sadistic, I feel like, because it reminded me a lot of like that Reservoir Dog scene where where Michael, Michael Madsen cuts the ear off. Yeah, he cuts the ear off, and they're playing uh, caught in the was it cut in the stuck caught in the middle, in the middle between stuck, stuck in, in the, the middle. middle with you. Yeah, yeah, and you, you're hearing that song, and it's like this is just straight up like gruesome, and it is, it is, and, and the thing disturbing. is disturbing. <laughs> and the thing is, Tarantino got that from Scorsese when Scorsese did something similar in Goodfellas when when he had Joe Pesci and Robert De Niro beat the fuck out of Billy Bats with a donovan song atlantis playing in the background yeah and it had a similar surreal vibe to it as well too nothing dark but it's like something dark is happening and this happy song is playing in the background yeah and i feel like this is exactly the same situation like you know um wade is being tortured you know like essentially tortured and you hear this like mr sandman in the back yeah and it's just like it's so disturbing and surreal, and I don't even know what the you know, they're hosing him while he's naked. It's like they're they're putting him through what what, what they Hell. go through at Guantanamo Bay. Yeah, yeah, like well, it's like almost like waterboarding, and then they put him in like an ice like an ice like you know bath or whatever. They're like trying to freeze him to death, trying to stress his body out to bring out whatever powers he might have. Yeah, but and it I, works. So like I'm I, not to backtrack or anything, but the guy agents he calls Agent Smith. Who yeah. got him to like do this program? Like, he was was he he was he was doing that just to kind of trick him, right? Trick him that he was going to cure this cancer, but well, they did cure the cancer, but, but yeah, he's got all this other like he's he got all this kind of mutant qualities now. He got left his body permanently scarred. I mean, he's got that fast healing ability. Let me backtrack. In the book, he's a, he's a mercenary in the book, right? But he discovers he has cancer, so he goes to something called the Weapon X program. That's what gave. Gave a person like Wolverine his metal skeleton and whatnot. What they did for Wade Wilson was they gave him a bottled up version of Wolverine's healing ability. And while it did cure his cancer, it left his body permanently scarred, but left him physically stronger, more agile, and with that healing ability that he has. So he can take an AK 47 point blade to the head right. and still keep running his mouth. So is that where the movie kind of takes a different path? Like the script takes a different path instead of them being, instead of. Uh, instead of Wade being in, involved in the X, like the X Men program, it's this Weapon is a, X. Weapon right. X. Yeah, this is a different. This is a different program, right? Or, it, it's. I think it is Weapon X, but they're not calling it that in the movie, though. Right. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. And and Ajax and Angel does play by Gina Carano. They weren't part of it neither at the time, and neither was that Agent Smith dude. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah, but I understand. But the, the liberties notwithstanding, I was okay with what they did in the movie. Yeah. Since they weren't taking themselves seriously anyway, it made it more enjoyable. Yeah, and I feel like sometimes you have to take liberty with the script and go different directions just to. With kind the of... yeah, with the source material, you do got to take liberties. Yeah, and this one right here, I can. The character's not serious in the book, so appropriately, the movie's not either. Yeah, gotcha. So our next song, it is by Flo Rida, and it's called. GDFR, right? Which stands for going down for real, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's got that synth horn sample or whatever that, that's really infectious in it. And that's what and that and that makes it perfect for a strip club too, including its bouncy, bouncy drum rhythms and whatnot. Yeah. So it's played when when Wade is uh and Wade Weasel. and Weasel were looking for Vanessa, Vanessa right? the strip club that she works at, yeah. Yeah. And <laughs> In that scene, you see a Stan Lee cameo in there as well, too, where he's the uh, the strip club DJ. And wh what did you say that he said earlier? He, he said, um, he was like, you, you, if you you come here, you may not find love, but, or you may find it. I think it's like you may find it for, th you, but you could rent it for three minutes. Mm -hmm. That's what it was. Yeah. Sorry. I had a little, a moment there. Yeah. It was, it was funny that he mentioned that like that. I'm like, okay, okay. Yeah. You, 
Like, as long as you were alive, you'll always be Marvel movies, but that's not the case anymore. R. Yeah, R. rest in peace, Stanley. And also, the guy who co-created Deadpool, Rob Liefeld, who was the artist who drew him in his first appearance, he's actually in the strip club, too, as well, as, like, an MC. Yeah. And then I was... Yeah, well, I, I was... I was thought it was so funny how they put Stan Lee in there, though. Like, it's, it was just hysterical. And then, like, of course, you have T.J. Miller in there, who's just being ridiculous the he, whole time. He is, he is funny. And this scene and every and every other scene he's been in, like the scene where they come up with the name for Deadpool. Yeah. It's like they, they trace up like Deadpool. Deadpool sounds like a fucking franchise. <laughs> <laughs> and when he gets with blind Al, like there's a mountain of coke in here. Want to get fucked up? <laughs> or like even in that scene in the strip club, he's like, like, like Wade's like, I'm looking for. Let's find Vanessa. Let's go this way. He's like, No, nah, I'm gonna hang back. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, Yeah, he's cool with it too because him and Weasel, they're like vitriolic best friends. Like they hate each other, but they're best friends. At first, I didn't even realize that it was T.J. Miller just because like his hair. I'm always used to seeing him with that brown, like kind of curly hair from Silicon uh, Silicon Valley. Yeah, now it looks like his his hair is like dripping oil. Yeah, and I was like, holy shit, that's TJ Miller. Like, <laughs> I just had like a moment there. I was like, whoa. But uh, yeah, man, I, I love the I love this song in, in the the strip club. It just works so well. Um, and I and also I was telling you pre- before we did this uh, before we were recording that uh, it re- reminded me of that scene from the opening. I think it was the first episode of The Wire. Where um, Avon and D'Angelo meet up in, the, in Orlando. It's a strip club. Yeah. yeah. I think it was like just, you know, very similar vibe. And it had that song. I always forget who sings that song. Um, we did cover it, I think, in one of our. In Any Given Sunday, I think we covered it there. Yeah. I can't remember. I can't remember a song neither. But they were playing that song in there. Um, had a similar kind of beat to it. It wasn't. It wasn't. It was more like a jazzy kind of beat to it, even for yeah. yeah, but it wasn't. It wasn't nothing like Flo Rida. Yeah, it wasn't like like those heavy, you know, drum beats. But it was more like jazzy, like very smooth. And it wasn't a rap song either. Yeah, I'm. Like, I'm not a brain it, but... far forward as well. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, but we've done. We've we've covered so many songs and so many episodes. It's easy to forget. But going on to our next one here by DMX. X gonna give it to you. I kind of like the, the title of this song a lot. Me too. It goes with the scene where they're like oh, the X characters. You got two X-Men and one who's a former X-Villain now. Now anti-hero. They're walking together. X gonna give it to you. Yeah. Go. Kind of a nice little playoff of the title there. It is actually. Yeah, it is. I remember when the song came out as a single back in the summer of 03. It was very very energetic. And what's it all? I don't know why they took him so long to come out with that single for because the album, the cra- it was featured on the Cradle to the Grave soundtrack, which featured DMX and Jet Li. And the soundtrack dropped in February of that year. And the only single that came off of it at the time was something called Go to Sleep with Eminem, DMX, and Obi Trice. Okay. And it got a lot of attention at the time because Eminem had a few subliminal shots at Ja Rule, who was right. the main enemy for 50's latest signee at the time, 50 Cent. And we covered uh, DMX in any given Sunday. Sunday. They yeah. had a song there, a song in there. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, another uh, another movie we we cover where DMX is in there, and and uh, this is a good one. This is when essentially Wade and uh, Colossus and um, Negasonic yeah, teenage warhead they uh, they they battle. They battle. They're about to battle Ajax and his forces, or Francis. No one ever calls him Ajax in the film, though. Yeah, they always call him Francis. Exactly. That reminds me of another comic character in there. Um, his name is Guido. Guido Carosella. He's one of the X-Men characters. His power is super strength. But guess what he's called? You know what his code name is? Oh, jeez. What Str- is Strong guy. Strong guy. Yeah. <laughs> but no one ever calls him that, though. Yeah. Are they on top of, like, I always, like, when I was watching the movie, are they on top of, like, an aircraft carrier or something? Or, like, like, um... The uh, Francis and like like his team are they is he standing on top of like an air I, aircraft After, carrier or something I never figured out what that thing I think was it, it looked like that or a, a building still under construction or it could be a parody of what's it called of the Shield helicarrier from the Marvel Cinematic Universe movies okay because after this because Deadpool came after came two years after Captain America Winter Soldier where Shield and the helicarrier were all dismantled okay so it could be a nod to that I guess yeah um. And, and the funny thing about this scene where X is going to give it to you is used when they're walking up, getting ready to fight Francis, Deadpool realizes that he doesn't have no weapons. Yeah, he left it in that bag in the, the taxi bag. cab. Uh-huh, in the taxi cab. And then the, ca- and the taxi cab ended up in an accident. Yeah. 
<laughs> and the bag is like, it's not like a typical gym bag. It's like pink. It's like a pink elementary <laughs> school girl's bag. Yeah. <laughs> that killed me. I was like, wow. Deadpool's a nut for that one. And he like, he like, dude, can you pack your bag? Can you overpack your bag anymore? Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Was like, and, was like, and how's this shit not breaking? Yeah. That, that scene was so funny when they're like loading that gym bag up and it's mm-hmm. like the, the blind lady and I forget her name. Blind Al. Blind <laughs> TJ Billy. Like, oh, let's go get fucked up. Uh huh. Yeah. It's like the cut in the coke in here. You tell a blind woman that she ain't going to find it. <laughs> this is crazy, man. And he said his hand after he cut his hand off when he was fighting, when he was fighting, uh, he was trying to fight Francis on the intersection, right? Yeah. Around the beginning of the movie and then the X Men show up. And then Francis gets away, they try to take Deadpool into custody. And Deadpool, he's handcuffed, but because of his healing power, he knows that he'll heal if he cuts his own hand off. <laughs> and his hand has the making the middle finger. <laughs> yeah, his hand left behind with the middle finger, and it sprayed blood on Colossus, right? And when it sprayed blood on Colossus, he said, Deadpool said, are you there, God? It's me, Margaret. And I didn't get what that meant. I had to look that up the second time I saw it. And when I found it, I was like, holy shit, the writers are, the writers are damn fools for that one. <laughs> Are you there, God? It's me. Margaret was a book written in the seventies about a girl who's having her period for the first time. Oh, jeez! I was like, wow. They are they are so well versed in obscure pop culture. <laughs> They're just dirty kind of humor. <laughs> dirty humor. Yeah, they found a way to make that make it into a dirty limerick, a dirty line. Yeah, it's like. Wow. I love it when DJ Miller is like they're they're sitting there and. Um, they're about to go and and fight um, Francis and his crew, and then they're they're loading all the guns up, and he's like. Do you want to? He's like, are you going to come? He's like, no, I don't want to. Not really. <laughs> he's like, I, he's like, do you do you want to tag along? He's like, no, not really. You think he's going to say yes? And he's, he's like, like no, no, I have no interest in going. Yeah, he, he ain't going. He's just a handler for all y'all mercs. He can't fight. He can't use no weapons. <laughs> and then the cell phone <laughs> the goes way. off. Do you remember the cell phone goes off? And he's like, what is this? He's like looking. He's like, oh, that's the like the like turd emoticon or something or like that's, that's emo- that's shit emoji. emoji. I thought it was chocolate yogurt at one point. <laughs> I think it actually is chocolate yogurt <laughs> or pudding or something. I don't think it's actual shit. <laughs> when he said that, that was so funny. I was like, wow. <laughs> That's I mean, where that Silicon Valley like kind of humor is coming back in. Yeah, he's like, he's like, even when he's looking at Wade too, back to the call, back to the scene where he first sees Deadpool's scarred face, he's like, I can't turn away. You are horrifying. You're like a testicle with teeth. <laughs> Wow, you know, yeah, it's like, it's like, like how they get away with all this? A yeah. test, a burnt up testicle with teeth. That's what he looks like. I'm, I'm really surprised. Like Stanley agreed to like go forward with with this film and the script because like it su- is, it is raunchy but funny. I'm, I'm not surprised. I mean, once of all, he's been in all the Mar. He said while well, he was alive, he'd be in all the Marvel films in some way. This one, this is the highest grossing rated R film ever, by the way. Deadpool. Yeah. I can't wait to watch the second one, man. I like, like honestly, I like the first one better. Than I did the second one. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the they they didn't blow their load on the first film, and they had plenty to do in the second one. But the first one was like, holy shit, they can do that! Wow. Yeah, it was like something I either laughed at, was shocked at, or like, but it held my attention the whole time. Yeah, and the violence, the the, the fight scenes, they were great. Yeah, there was a lot of blood and gore. And- it's a lot of over the top cartoonish hilariously cartoonish violence yeah yeah i enjoyed it though definitely enjoyed it because i don't watch a lot i feel like i don't watch a lot of like the marvel like comic book flicks like i'm you know and and now i feel like i'm kind of getting a chance to jump into it and i i thought it, it was a nice one to, to for me to jump into and kind of experience and i i really enjoyed a lot of the humor as well and you'll then you should know you should check out as well kick ass kick ass yeah. yeah that came out in 2010 it was based on the marvel book one of those Marvel books that's like like parodies, parodies comic book conventions by showing what would happen if real life people actually tried to dress up like costume vigilantes and superhero. Who is in that? Like a uh, Dave Oh no, that's not the guy's name. Uh, Aaron Aaron Johnson something. He was in he was in Savages. Okay. Yeah, and he was in a he was in what's it called? The Captain America Civil War. He played Quicksilver. He was in Savage. He was a Taylor Kitsch's character. Taylor okay. Kitsch's boy. Okay. He, he's in He plays Kick-Ass. Nicolas Cage. Chloe Moretz. Oh, jeez. Yeah, Nicolas Cage. He's funny in this. <laughs> His now I gotta see it. If Nicolas Cage is in it... <laughs> oh, yeah. You'll be laughing at this scene. Especially, uh, especially one scene where he has... I'm not gonna spoil it for you. You gotta see it for yourself. You'll see why that he's... You'll be laughing like you did if you saw The Wicker Man. 
And speaking of comedy, with this next song, with Chicago, you're the inspiration. Oh my goodness! This was so funny, and they're like, you know, Deadpool gets like stabbed what in the head. Yeah, and he's like trying to like talk to Vanessa. Uh, he's doing sign language. Sign language with the heart. When this song's playing in the background, it's just like so over the top. It like, is. It is. That's what I was intended. Yeah. <laughs> and I think everyone knows this song when you hear it, like. You know, you probably heard it on like some uh, top forty radio, top forties, yeah, or Karate Kid because the same guy, the singer Peter Cetera, he had that one song from Karate Kid Part Two. Yeah, uh, I'm trying to think. Didn't they spin off the Karate? Like, there's an, a show now on YouTube about Cobra Kai. Yeah, Cobra and, Kai. Yeah, and it takes the whole theme. There was a video on YouTube a few years back that says this is why Daniel was the real villain in Karate Kid and Johnny was the hero. They I think Cobra Kai was uh, was inspired by that because even though it's a direct, it's directly connected to Karate Kid. Yeah, Johnny is now the protagonist, and Daniel's a successful car dealership owner. He's rich now. This is Ralph Macchio's character. Yeah, Ralph yeah. Macchio. Yeah, they got a lot of the older people back in the previous films too. I love how he shows up in Andrage. Like, hey, oh. Ralph. <laughs> when Johnny gets kicked out of the Playboy Mansion. Oh yeah, that's right. I remember that. Yeah. Speaking of that, we need to do an episode on Entourage, that soundtrack. Oh, wow. There's a lot to cover in there. Yeah, that's like that's almost like the Sopranos like episode it is. <laughs> that it we is. did. <laughs> and, I've seen, and I've seen every episode of Entourage from Jump Street. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, it's definitely a lot of great music. but And a lot of great scenes in there, too. My yeah. God. Yeah. A lot of great cameos like Ralph Macchio and yeah. Val he, Kilmer. J- and James Woods. J- Jimmy Woods. Jimmy Woods, yeah. How about I knock this fucking door down and come in there and shove your head on Turtle's ass? <laughs> He's like, I want my, my fucking, fucking tickets. tickets. Or what? You going to huff and puff and blow the house down, Jimmy? <laughs> Give me my fucking tickets. You got five seconds. <laughs> he just goes like freaking casino on him, man. <laughs> he does, yeah. I'm like... And, I'm like, you dye your hair to make yourself look younger and you still pull chicks like that. I mean, he does that in real life. Yeah. I, I'm I thought it was great that he did that though, coming on Entourage. Oh yeah, what's it called? So this is the shithole that, that Ari's got you working out of, huh now, Lloyd? <laughs> like you can tell Jimmy Woods that if he wants these tickets, he's gonna come down here and come get him. Fuck Jimmy Woods. <laughs> And this scene, man, going back to the scene in Deadpool, it's yeah. so funny when, like, you see the like what the little like hearts coming in, like the hearts coming in unicorns and yeah. whatnot. <laughs> and he's making heart shaped signs with his hands, and then he immediately switches up to like an intercourse <laughs> <laughs> with this song playing in the background. It's totally ridiculous, <laughs> totally ridiculous. But I, I love it, man. And then, what does she call him? Like an asshole? She's like You're asshole. <laughs> <laughs> oh it's great it's great but um then we go to our next well actually our last song right That's yeah it, it is our last song yeah the last song that was used in the film before it fades out in the in the, in the ending credits yeah wham careless whisper yeah, it's from their song their 1984 album make it big which was a big album i have it upstairs to one cd by the way yeah yeah and it's known for that one big hit wake me up before you go go and the video where they have Everybody in t-shirts say, that say choose life. <laughs> Straight up 80s, it was. Yeah. It's got that like um, like saxophone yeah. like sound to it. And you oh, I think that's really like the characteristic like sound, like quintessential like That's a big portion of the sound right there that makes people know it. That yeah. saxophone part. Yeah, you hear it, you're just like you know that this is this is that song, wham, careless yeah. whisper. Yeah, they even had a hard rock cover of it by the band Seether. It came out ten years ago. Yeah, their version was good too. Nice. But um yeah, this was used at the the final scene and even dude the closing credits were silly. Yeah, I mean, they were. They were. They did they, they don't take shit seriously, which but it worked. Yeah. And even like you said, we we were talking earlier about the ending scene where Wade he takes off he's reunited with Vanessa, takes his mask off, right, but you're not gonna like what you're gonna see. She pulls off the mask and he has Hugh Jackman's, Hugh Jackman's a print <laughs> of Hugh Jackman's face stapled onto his face. <laughs> Like you know, just had to throw a Wolverine gag in there too. I knew it. And then I was I was doing I was looking up this up on the internet and Hugh Jackman did kind of like some more shtick online on his Twitter. I think it was like it was either I wanna say like Ryan Reynolds had won some award, mm-hmm. like Canadian Actors Award or something. And so then he put uh, Ryan Reynolds' face like over his and he did a video. <laughs> <laughs> and he, he, and he's like, he's trying to do an Australian accent. He's like, maybe he should go do Crocodile Dundee 7 or something. <laughs> 
but uh it was good i i thought they had some sort of like beef going on but it was like nah. it was uh i'm thankful it was just a joke it is a joke yeah hugh jackman's a good sport with it yeah yeah and he did mac he's been he's done so many movies with I mean, the marvel like i mean he's most known for his time as wolverine during the x-men films i mean that's how he blew up x-men yeah and given the fact that fox i mean um disney has re has acquired 20th century fox studios and they will be incorporating an X Men film in the Marvel Cinematic Universe in the future, but I, I don't believe Hugh Jackman will be playing the character by then. Yeah, I mean, I think it it, it kind of takes its turn, right? You know, like it, it's, and I'm not not for the worse, I would say, but I think Hugh's probably ready to move on and do some other work. It's kind of like Daniel Craig in the Bond series, and like, and a lot of these guys in the Marvel Cinematic Universe movies too, like Robert Downey Jr., Chris Evans. Chris yeah. Evans has been vocal about not wanting to play Captain America no more. Yeah, I mean, because I think you get typecast in those, you know, yeah, and those roles, and you just want to do other work and, you know, have a diverse career. And He wants to direct, too, as well, yeah. I mean, Robert Downey Jr., he doesn't need to play Tony Stark no more. I mean, he made more money than anybody off all the ten films that he was in. Yeah. And he was already known before that, but being Iron Man, that was really a comeback for him. Yeah, and he's had a real comeback story. I think that's what I like about him, and he, he he's got a lot of... A lot of range, you know, he can do these real serious roles, but then he can do really funny stuff, too. I mean, yeah, Tony Stark, that was a mix of both. And, yeah. And when I remember when he was when I heard he was being cast as Tony Stark and given what we know about the character, he's a genius billionaire alcoholic. Yeah, I was like, they got the right guy to play Tony Stark. This guy, if y'all seen less than zero, y'all know what I mean. Yeah. Yeah. He's definitely like he he's lived it in his personal life and he's also like can do a great job putting that on screen as well i mean i mean he said it himself i like i'm i don't know what the term good actor means i know that i'm an incredibly gifted faker (laughs) yeah man um do you think there's going to be a deadpool 3 or technically there was but it was pg-13 but it it, it got mixed reviews so they're going to do a third rated r sequel for deadpool definitely so that what was the name of that was the what was the name of that movie? Like, just was it actually called Deadpool Three, or was Not, it like a different title? It had a different title to it. I forget what it was. I didn't see it though. But when I heard it got mixed reviews because it was PG thirteen, I was like, "That's that's expected." That's the reason why, because it's not living up to the the content that was in the previous films. I guess, yeah. I mean, when you when they, the previous films, especially this film, Deadpool number one. That, like, raised, I think personally, that raised the bar for what you can do with superhero movies. It's like, especially with, not just because they were cursing, but because of how explicit they were. And Marvel, especially the Marvel Studios with their Netflix, the the, the programming that they used to have on Netflix, like The Punisher, Daredevil, Luke Cage, they were pretty explicit there, too. I mean, that's where Marvel Studios put all their rated R characters that they couldn't have on screen. Yeah. But with the success of Deadpool... It's like, okay, Disney, Marvel Studios, step your game up because you can put out a rated R movie and be successful, be critically and commercially successful. Look at Deadpool. Yeah, I mean, has Dead has Disney ever done that before? Or? Put out something like that? Like a rated R movie or? Well, depends. I mean, when they, Miramax, I don't know when they acquired Miramax films, but what's it called? Miramax, they were known for all their Kevin Smith films a, a, a while back. And those were all rated R or NC-17. Okay. But I don't know if Disney owned them back then. If okay. they did, then that'd be a yes to your question. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, hopefully the Deadpool three lives up to the the reputation of one and and two. I hope so. I'm eager to see what they do. I mean, I'm not gonna give you no spoilers on Deadpool two, but did you did you ever see the trailer for it? No. Okay. I won't. I won't say anything. Then I'll let you see it. Well, I'll definitely have to go watch that one. And uh, man, I, I I really like Ryan Reynolds too. I think he's hysterical. Uh, he's a good serious actor and. A good uh, comedic actor as well. And good I, action as well, too. Like, I remember him in Smoke and Aces. Yeah, Smoke and Aces was a great one. And then Safe House was awesome with Denzel. I love that movie. I saw that as well, too, yeah. With an awesome ending song with uh, Jay-Z and Kanye. Mm-hmm. What's it? Um, Church in the Wild. Yeah, 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 it was on what's it called? Um, the, the, the joint album they had in 2011, Watch the Throne. Yeah. Yeah, Ryan, Ryan Reynolds. I remember him from that, that show, 15, that high school show. I remember watching it as a kid when it used to sh- when it used to come on Nickelodeon back when I was in elementary school. He yeah. played Billy Billy Simpson, I think. And then when I looked him up years later, when he started starring in more movies that that, that I like, like Smoke and Aces, and I saw that he was in Fifteen. Who was he? That was him. Yeah. Wow. He's like the only one that has a career now. 
Josh Brolin was cracking on him for that. He was like, "Oh, you're in like a like soap operas." He's like, "Oh, great! So you're pretty much been bullshitting your whole life. <laughs> <laughs> They're roasting each other." Yeah, it was just. I was like, "Wow, these are two uh, heavyweights here." Yeah, they uh, they they can actually go back and forth, especially Reynolds. I mean, he's more like that's why I think that's why he signed up to be Deadpool, really, because if it goes along with how asshole he can be at times yeah and he was in van wilder <laughs> van wilder <laughs> waiting waiting mm-hmm. that's another great one and he had a cameo on ted as well too okay right and that was with um and mark Wahlberg. mark Wahlberg. oh boy those two <laughs> that was, the first ted was funny i'll have to see that man i still haven't seen those two movies man but uh well hey this was awesome man i really enjoyed doing this um lots of great music we covered and a great movie that you know uh, I definitely am looking forward to seeing the second one and and the third one hopefully in the future. But uh, we should do another we should do another episode on uh, a Marvel Marvel movie. Maybe we do uh, Galaxies uh, Guardians of the Galaxy or oh, oh, yeah, that, they those two had a lot of music in them, the first two Guardians. Yeah, and like I remember seeing the first Guardians in the movies and like pulling out my phone like every few seconds to put on Shazam to figure out what what is this song? What is that? I'm like okay, okay, I got I got some downloads I need to do when I go home. Thank you. Yeah. Second film, same way too. But I, I, funny thing is, in the second film, he gets a he gets a what's it called um, a Microsoft Zoom as his music player. <laughs> Before that, he had a tape player from his mother from the eighties. Wow. And I'm like, okay, this takes place directly after the first Guardians, which was in 2014. Yeah, the Zoom was discontinued in 2012. That's what I was just about to say. I was like, do they still have those? Like, <laughs> I had a Zoom at one point. It was a great, it was a great MP3 player. But the problem is, the battery went to shit after four years. Yeah, I've had an iPod for seven years now, and the battery is still kicking on that one. Great. Yeah, doing your little Apple plug there. <laughs> yes, yes. Well, unintentionally, it wasn't. A, it wasn't. A, it wasn't an intentional <laughs> plug. I'm pro. I'm a PC. I don't even have an. I don't even have an iMac. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, that's the one. That's the one Apple product I've never bought. Okay. All right. The closed end system thing doesn't work for me. All right. Well, I'll take your word for it. All right, man. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All Thank right, you. Right. Thank you. I can. Well, hey, man. Thanks for doing this. This is awesome, <laughs> and uh, look forward to doing uh, another one soon. Thank you for having me. It's always great to be here, Andrew. All right, man. Take care. You too. This podcast is available on my YouTube channel, Rotunes Reviews. It's also available on iTunes, Spotify, SoundCloud, Stitcher, and other major podcast distributors as well. So if you don't mind, please leave me some feedback. I'd really appreciate that. If you'd like to connect with me on social media, I'm on Facebook, Twitter. My Twitter handle is at Rotunes Revs. I'm on Instagram, and I'm also on the Untapped app. My username is Brutuned. This is Andrew signing off. Cheers. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to the channel and follow Roadtunes Reviews on Blogger, Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. And as always, thank you so much for your support.